Hey guys, it's Amber from NotableInk.com back with another project for Cut Card Stock. And I have a piece of Star Dream Metallic Aquamarine paper here. I've printed a digital paper on the background of this and I'm going to use the Honeybee Stamps Deckled Edge Rectangle Die. This is the largest die in the set. I'm just going to die cut this. It'll be slightly smaller than A2 size. What I'm going to do is entangle some patterns on here and then I'll go ahead and Copic color it. So I have a Pigma Micron pin here. This is an 01 from Sakura and this is a permanent archival pen and it works great with Copic markers. And I, unfortunately, you guys, I do not remember the name of this pattern. Um, and there's another little pattern that I'm going to do that I don't remember the name of either I'm, and I'm sorry about that I searched for it and just could not find it so once I have the pattern down I'm going to outline it or aura it just to leave a space because I'm going to do some coloring and that will help to set it apart from the background and the drop shadow so this pattern here is almost like a mocha hybrid and it's just holding like a little pearl in the center and so once this pattern is done, I'm going to add some orbs. This is called tipple, this pattern. Just some simple orbs to use as filler. The dark areas in between each one of the orbs helps to add some contrast to the pattern. So I like to add those. And then this is fescue, which is this really simple pattern. Here I've just colored it in black and left a small highlight. And then I'm going to go ahead and outline the other... Um, little plants that I've added as well and again once I add the shadow you're gonna see that it's gonna help separate it from the background the next pattern that I'm gonna add is one that I love it is a hybrid between mocha and dude d-e-w-d -E and I love mocha so I just like to change it to mocha for for whatever reason I don't know it just works for me so this is one of those like uh, comfort patterns I guess you could say um, so I'm just going to run this up the side of the card here, leaving some space in between these two clusters. And then I'll add another small little cluster over here on the left, just so that to balance the card a little bit more. And then in between these two clusters, I'm going to add some curved lines and fill those in with black ink. I'm going to start adding some color and shadow to these tangles. And I have Copic markers in RV63. RV66 and RV69. And the interesting thing about Star Dream Metallic cardstock is it's a semi porous surface and it's a smoother cardstock. So the Copic markers tend to sit on the surface. So what you're going to see as you continue to add layers of the Copics, and especially when you come in with a lighter marker, is that you start to get an alcohol ink effect to it. It's like if you're using your alcohol inks and painting with alcohol inks on like a Upo paper or another non-porous substrate, you start to get those alcohol ink looking textures. That goes really well with this watercolor digital paper background that I've printed on this. So it all kind of starts to have this, a little bit of a mixed media feel to it. Um, Star Dream metallic paper behaves differently than if you color on curious metallic cardstock. I don't know if you've ever colored on that before. Curious metallic is just slightly more porous. It also has a little bit of texture or tooth to the paper. So you will, I have heard that there are many Copic artists that actually color on cryogen white curious metallic paper. In my blog post, I'll link to another post where I colored on Curious Metallic Aloe paper so that you can see the difference in the two finishes and the final result of the card. So I'll have all the colors that I use also listed in my blog post, but as I switch colors, you can see that I'm popping up the actual markers up on the screen so that you have that as a reference. So here you can see the metallic shine of this paper and because the Copic markers are translucent, you can still see the shine of the paper through that, which I think is really pretty. Here I'm gonna use B93 and B99 to color these mocha slash dude in. And so I just put the lightest color on the small little orb end and then I'm using the darkest color for the stem and then also to add some shading. And then I'll come back in with the lightest color and just kind of dot that around. It's gonna pick up the darker color 
and blend those colors together, but you're also gonna get that kind of like washed out alcohol marker, alcohol ink kind of look as well. Here I'm just gonna use the same yellows that I used for those orbs over on the left and just add some shadow to the areas in between these two um, kind of stalks of dude, I guess. And I'll use that dark brown just to add some deeper shadows. After that's done, I'm gonna switch over to BV20, 23, and 25 to add a shadow. And I went with more of a blue gray with these BVs. It's a desaturated blue violet. Um, I thought that that would go with the color palette better than the cool grays or even the warm grays. So um, these are great markers for shadows if you want anything a little bit on the bluer end. So I'm just gonna blend these out and you can see, this is where you'll start to see that that aura that I put around the pattern, it's gonna leave that white, well, aquamarine in this case, but it leaves that white space around the pattern that I drew and that's gonna really help it pop off the page, especially when you start to add the, the drop shadow. Um, so I'm just blending these out with the lighter colors and then I come in with the colorless blender just to soften up those edges a little bit more so that it doesn't have a sharp edge. Then I decided with the watercolor background that we have here, just to pop some of those areas forward as well. So I'm adding a drop shadow, um, especially where those overlap or overlay the pattern that we've drawn. So I've kind of drawn it so that it looks like it's drawn behind that. I'll stamp the sentiment in a pigment black ink, obsidian black ink from Altenew. And here you can see the texture of the alcohol markers on this paper. It's just such a cool effect. I really enjoy the look of it. So if you kind of want more of a painterly effect, this is a great paper to get that effect. Um, and then here's the finished card here. I didn't add any other embellishments. You certainly could. I hope you give this technique a try. If you do, tag us at Cut Cardstock and at Notable Ink. We'd love to see what you're creating. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If you like this video, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell to be alerted of new inspiration, and I'll see you real soon.